Whiskey Cast. Proudly brought to you by Redbreast, the definitive single pot still Irish whiskey. Join the still house at singlepotstill.com and receive an exclusive whiskey tasting journal. Welcome to another episode of Whiskey Cast HD. I'm Mark Gillespie, cruising through Tuscany, Italy in a Mini Cooper with my arm outside the sunroof, the camera's outside the sunroof, but we're here for a reason. One of the things that I've not had the chance to really do on Whiskey Cast is explore where these wine casks come from that are used for finishing various single malts. Glen Morangie has just released our teen. It's a uh, cask finished whiskey using Sasaiko wine casks from Tuscany. And they brought us here with a bunch of other journalists to see where the casks come from, where the wine came from. And I want to turn the camera around and show you a little bit of what we're looking at right now, just for fun, because I can. This is what we're driving through as I do this right now. And Mariella is our driver, and she is all bundled up because this is the middle of February. And like an idiot, the sunroof is open. I've got my arm out the window to do this. But it's the only way we could do it in a Mini Cooper. In the coastal vineyards around Bulgari, winemakers traditionally used Sangiovese grapes, but Tenuta San Guido was the exception. The Marchese Mario Inciza della Rocchetta thought Cabernet Sauvignon vines would do better in the gravelly soil of his estate. Sassacaya is Italian for the place of many stones, and after two decades of sharing his wines only with family and friends, the Marchese released his first bottles of Sassacaya in 1968. Sassacaya is really um, hallowed ground, if you will, for Italian wine lovers. It, it transformed an entire country, really. Um, Sassacaya began what's known now as the Super Tuscan Revolution, and um, that, that led to a quality increase in, in really all Italian wines across the board. And so to speak about the, the icon wines, and it's easy to do in California and the, and the you know, Cabernet Sauvignon based wines out of California, out of Bordeaux, but when you're looking at Italy, there are certainly world-class Barolos that, that have put um, Italy on the map, uh, Brunello di Mantocinos, but Sassacaya is that bullseye Right, right in the archery target, it's that bullseye of, of a quality revolution in Tuscan wines. Glen Morangie's Dr. Bill Lumsden is one of the pioneers of wine cask finishing. Several years ago, he acquired some of Tenuta Sanguido's Sassacaya casks. Firstly, I'd had some success with um, other red wines, most notably things like Romani Conti, Chateau Margot, Chateau Boutel Rothschild. So I knew, I knew that that style of wine, particularly the Bordeaux blend style, worked quite well with Glenmorangie. And I just discovered by chance the cult of Sassacaya. Fernando Fiore gets the credit for introducing Bill to Sassacaya. Nadi owned a restaurant in Bologna for many years and was an early fan of Sassacaya. At the beginning it was too big for us too full body, too, I don't mean hard, but too big. Then, with the years you go, we, go, we got acquainted to that, we got used to that, and we could, of course, it's not an everyday wine, you know, you could not afford it, you know, and you could not really enjoy it every, at every dinner, every meal. In Italy, we drink wine at every meal. We could not do that with the Sassicaia, you know, and, but special evening, special occasion, good dinner, good menu, that is something that makes you remember the dinner. And now you, got, you can complement it with a good drama whiskey. Glenmore and GR Teen carries a 15-year-old age statement, but Bill Lumsden decided to vat together casks of 15 and 21-year-old Glenmore and G, finished for as long as eight years in the Sasakaya casks. Of course it has the base Glenmorangie with all its complexity, its silkiness, its sweet vanilla notes. It has a real backbone of spiciness and leather notes from the French oak. And it has this rather unusual, almost jammy red fruit type flavour which obviously has come directly from the wine. And since it was Nari Fiori's idea, he was one of the first to taste our teen. We uncorked one bottle exactly 
22 days ago, 1st of February. It was cold in the middle of the snow at the Tenuta San Guido, at the door of the Tenuta San Guido. I did not enjoy that much. It was too cold, frozen, frozen whiskey. So I got a bottle to take home so I could have tasted it quietly at home, which I did. And we had a very cold winter, a lot of snow. So drinking some good whiskey at home with the snow outside was a beautiful thing, you know. And I found this delicious. When I uncorked the bottle, wine came out. A wine perfume, really. And, and really is very present in my, in my mind now, you know. The first impression is winey. Then I started drinking it, and then I did the right thing, adding some water. I found it, as Dr. Lambton said, a little peppery at the beginning. Winey and peppery. But with a few drops of water, smooth and pleasant. Silk, oily, but, you know, it's silky is a very good expression. It makes you think to something very soft, pleasant to touch, you know. And this is pleasant to touch with the tongue, of course, you know. <laughs> By the way, the name has nothing to do with Italy. Artine is Gaelic for stone, and in this case, one specific stone in Scotland. The Hilton of Cadbol is one of the oldest Pictish standing stones in the world. It was erected 12 centuries ago, a few miles from where the Glenmorangie Distillery was built in 1843. The original stone is in the National Museum in Edinburgh. Stone carver Barry Grove spent five years creating this replica. Part of the stone's artwork is featured on Artine's label, and Glenmorangie adopted this part of the stone's design as its logo several years ago. For more cask strength conversation on whiskey, join us each week for Whiskey Cast. I'm Mark Gillespie.